السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام علی اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین خاتم النبیین شفیع المذنبین رحمت للعالمین مولانا و سیدنا ابی القاسم محمد اللہ صلی اللہ و علا علیہ طیبین الطاہرین لا سیما بقیت اللہ فی الارض ارواح له الفدا و لعنت اللہ علا آدائہم اجمعین من الان الى قیام یوم الدین اما بعد فقط قال رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ و علیہ و سلم اللہ صل علی محمد و علی محمد یا اب الحسن افضل الاعمال فی هذا الشہر My dear respected elders, brothers, sisters, Salaamu Alaikum Rahmatullah. Yeah, it's an honor to be here once again after I think six years. We've been through a lot. The world has been through a lot. The pandemic and everything, Alhamdulillah. We are, seem to be out of that situation now. And what a fantastic moment we are in that Allah has given us the tawfiq to be alive to witness at least some hours of Mahi Ramazan because we don't know next hour are we going to be alive or not. We pray that we are and we can benefit from this month properly. Mahi Ramadan is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. It is full of the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is full of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is full of the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is full of the barakat of Allah, the rizq of Allah, the forgiveness of Allah, the mafi of Allah, the maghfirat of Allah, the rahmat of Allah, all of these things are in Mahi Ramazan. We have seen how many Ramazans? If I ask my elders, they've seen plenty. I've seen few less than them. But the younger ones have seen a few less than me. Mahi Ramazan comes, Mahi Ramazan goes. Shabi Qadr comes, Shabi Qadr goes. In the beginning, we have all of these wonderful hajat and we have all of these wonderful thoughts that this year is the year of change. This year I'm going to sort myself out. This year I'm going to be different. This year I'm going to make proper use of the time that I have. This year I will not waste time. This year I... Those years go by and they go by and they go by. Question, why don't we change? What is it? What's happening? There's something wrong with this picture that we are not changing. We should really be changing rapidly because Allah says this is the month in which you can change rapidly everything is accelerated in this month anfasukum fihi tasbih wa nawmukum fihi ibada wa amalukum fihi maqbul wa duaukum fihi mustajab in this month your sleeping is ibadat your breathing is glorification you pray one ayat of the quran you get the sawab of the whole of the quran in this one month you'll get on one night, whichever night that is Shabi Qadr, inshallah, we're going to talk about Shabi Qadr today. On that one night, you'll be given a whole lifetime's worth of impact. Khairum min alfi shahar. Alfi shahar, how much is that? Thousand months, 83 and a bit years. Etle? One whole lifetime in one night. Shabi Qadr goes, Shabi Qadr comes. We sit in the mosque, we do all the amal, still. Are we changing the way you would expect someone that in one night you will change according to the whole lifetime ahead of you? I don't think so. The question we have to ask is why? Why is it like this? What is happening? What is preventing us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the answer in the Holy Quran. Listen very carefully. This is Surah 13 verse 17. The first part of this verse, Allah says, وَأَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ He sends down from the sky ma'an fasalat awdiyatun biqadariha very important ya Allah what a dars you've given us in this verse he sends down from the sky rains the rains fill the valleys anything new here? no everyone knows this the rain comes the rain fills the valleys all the low lying ground in the world gets filled when the rain flows however biqadariha according to its capacity. According to its capacity. You have a large capacity, the valley has a large capacity, it will take more rain, it will hold more water, people will be able to benefit from it more. Smaller valley, 
smaller ground will hold less rain. It will not be able to benefit as much people. So what is the thing that is stopping the valleys from being filled? Is it the rain coming down? Is it the water? Is it the clouds? Is it, what is it? It is what? It is Qadariha. Its own capacity. Now let's put that into our lives. What is stopping us from benefiting from Mahir Ramazan? Our capacity. This is a metaphorical statement by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not a metaphorical. It's a literal, but it has a metaphorical meaning. That we send down rains, but it will only fill the valleys according to their capacity. If you have a small capacity, dil nanu hoy. Sorry, I, do, I hope you don't mind if I put some Gujarati here and there. It's my habit. dil nanu hoy. Whoever's heart is very small, what will he gain from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When Allah is saying, I'm raining down my grace, my mercy, my maghfirat, my barakat. You take as much as you can. Come. Come with your heart and benefit. Tu taru dil leine ao. Bring your heart. I will fill it. Then how much will it get filled? If my heart is very small, it will only take a bit of Allah's grace. Therefore, once Shawwal comes and a few days more and a few months more and a few weeks more, sometimes that effect of Ramazan is gone. Why? Because the capacity was not there. The valley got emptied very, very quickly. Matlab, this year, what we want to do is we want to increase our capacity. The thing is not that Allah, I want to increase Allah sending down, excuse me, Allah is sending down بِغَيْرِ hisab, hisab وَغَرْنُ So much, you can't even count the amount He's sending to us. We are unfortunate that we do not have the capacity to take what He is sending down. In this world, Allah doesn't say no to anyone, do you know that? Allah doesn't say no to anyone, especially in this month. Allah doesn't say no to anyone, He says one thing, He says bring your container. Let me see how much you can take. According to your capacity, I will fill. You bring your container. Let me see how big your container is. Amirul Mu'mineen. In his hadith to Hazrat Kumail, brothers, sisters, one thing in these next two weeks when I'm with you, we are going to really, really concentrate on Amirul Mu'mineen. Nahjul Balagha, open it, do a search, go onto Google, type a few words, you'll get the result. Amirul Mu'mineen says to Hazrat Kumail, Kumail ibn Ziyad, Whose dua Kumail we recite. He says, Ya Kumail, in Nahadihil Kulub O Iyatun. Kumail, do you know that these hearts of ours are containers? Fakhiruha o aha. The best of these hearts are the most expansive and wide and broad. Allah wants to give. There is no end of Allah's giving. Never think to yourself, Maridua kem kabul natitati. Don't say that. It's not that. Think what capacity am I bringing towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What capacity am I bringing to Him? Rasulullah says in his famous khutbah of Sha'aban, Inna hukad akbala ilaykum shahrullah. Shahrullah, month of Allah is coming to you. Bil barakati wal rahmati wal maghfirah. It is carrying with it a number of gifts. Amongst them are these three. Rahmat. Rahmat ne sukhe suhamne? Sukhe suhamne? Mercy, rahmat, maghfirat, forgiveness, barakat, blessings. These three things are being brought by Mahir Ramazan. You don't even need to ask much. You don't even need to ask much. It is bringing its own barakat. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss three fundamental points, three very, very key points. Are there only three? No, there are tens, hundreds of points we can discuss, but we are going to concentrate on three so that it's easily digestible and mu'mineen. We can easily, inshallah, work on it and practice it with the barakat of salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. There is a time of the day, okay? In Islam, we don't believe that all the times of the day are equal, okay? You ask someone, what is the difference between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m.? As someone who's not a Shia, they'll say there's no difference, it's just one hour later. You ask someone, what is the difference between this time and that time? They won't know, they, they, they don't have this concept. But in Shia Islam, we have this concept. Every time has its own delicacy and delicious nature. Every time has its own delicacy and its own nature. One time is not the same as the other time. There are different times and the qualities are different. Who can tell me, of course this is only to brothers, who can tell me what is the best time in the 24-hour cycle of a day, in a 24-hour cycle of a day, 
What is the best time that Allah loves the most, which is the most impactful for spirituality? Fajr. Any other takers? Tahajjud. I think I'll go with Tahajjud. According to our narrations and our hadith and our teachings, Tahajjud time is the best time in which Allah answers the most prayers, gives the most forgiveness, gives the most barakat, forgives you the most, blesses you the most. Hawe, what is Tahajjud? Which time is that? What is Tahajjud? No, I want to know the time. What is the time? I'll give you a formula. Formula to work out tahajjud. I don't call it tahajjud time. I call it sahar time. The more accurate term is sahar time. That's why when we wake up and we have something to eat before fasting, what do we call it? We call it sahri. Or if you're like me, traditional, you call it daku. But otherwise, you call it sahri. Why? Because it's taken at the time of sahar. The formula is as follows. You take the time of Maghrib. Then you take the time of Fajr. And you work out how long is there between Maghrib and Fajr. Then you divide that time by six. The last sixth is the time of Sahar. So if there's 12 hours between Maghrib and Fajr, this example is very easy. If there's 12 hours, you do 12 divided by six is two. So the last two hours, the last sixth before Fajr, is Sahar. Now, you'll have to do the calculation when you get home and you look at the timetable and you work out this and that. But basically, it's those couple of hours, one and a half hours be before Fajr time. This is Sahar time. This is the most important time where unfortunately, most people are asleep and oblivious to this. How many years have we been oblivious to this? How many years have we ignored this? How many years, imagine, we have wasted our life without benefiting from Sahar time? Why is Sahar so special? Why? This is a beautiful thing. Sahar is so special. There are a number of reasons. However, I only want to focus on one. The reason why Sahar is so special is because if there is any time of the day where you can guarantee the awliya of Allah, the special servants of Allah, are engaged in ibadat. It is sahar time. And top of the list of all awliya, who will we put? Who is at the top of the list of all awliya of Allah, the closest one to Allah? None other than Imam Zamana, Ajalallahu Ta'ala, Farajuhu Sharif. So what happens is, Imam is doing ibadat at that time then when you wake up and you do ibadat at that time, Allah is sending so much barakat at that time, number one. Number two, Imam is doing ibadat at that time. Imam is receiving the maximum grace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You also do ibadat at that time, that grace falls on you as well. Why? Because you have been included in that special group of awliya, along with the Imam of the time, receiving grace of Allah. Some of you, I'm guaranteeing you have a question in your mind. The question is probably this. Imam might be in a different place in the earth. How do we know he's doing ibadat at the same time as us? What if he's in the east? What if he's in somewhere else? What if his sahar time is not the same as our sahar time? No, that's not the way to understand this. That doesn't matter. It is the spirit that counts. It doesn't mean you have to be in exactly the same time zone as Imam to benefit from this. No, it is the spirit. Spiritually, you are connected. Why? Because his day started with ibadat at sahar time. Your day is starting with ibadat at sahar time. His day started in a particular way. You are following in his footsteps. That spiritual connection goes beyond this latitude and longitude and time zone and this and that. That is not the important thing. Please don't focus on these things. These things are irrelevant. What we want to focus on is, I should be included in that special group of awliya of Allah doing ibadat at sahar time with my imam, wherever he may be in this world. I want to be included in that group. So, first practical point, the lecture is about three practical points, how to make this Ramadan very special. First practical point is, do not ignore the time of sahar. 
whether it's five minutes, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, whatever you can, you can achieve, whatever you can do, but don't just sleep through as if nothing. And if you are awake at that time, then don't use all that time in eating and drinking. Don't use all that time in just chilling and doing what not. Use some of that time for your ibadat. Some, whatever you can imagine, whatever you can stomach, whatever you can take, whatever you can achieve. That is the first practical point. Azizan, I implore you, do not neglect the time of sahar. You will see what a difference it makes to your life. What sukoon you find in your life. What progress you find in your life. What beautiful kinds of ilahi, divine feelings and messages you will receive in your life from the barakat of sahar. Now practical point number two with a loud salawat, please. Allahumma salam. Allah. Mahe Ramazan. We, when we hear Mahe Ramazan, we tend to think of roja, fasting, right? This is usually what we say. Mahe Ramazan is the month of fasting. No. It is the month of fasting, but it's not the main thing in Ramazan. In Ramazan, what is the main thing? Hmm? Ibadat. Main thing of Mahe Ramazan, Azizan, is Quran. Quran, Quran, Quran. If anyone is to ask you, any non-Muslim colleagues, fellow classmate, whatever it is, wherever you are, if they ask you, this Ramazan of yours, what is it all about? You tell them one thing, it is about the Holy Quran being revealed. It is about the Holy Quran being revealed. So the whole year of 12 months, the highlight of the 12 months is the month of Ramazan. And the highlight of the month of Ramazan is what? Shabe Qadr. So the highlight of the whole year is Shabe Qadr. We must look forward to Shabe Qadr in such a nice way. It's like our year end. It's when we get the bonus of the year. It's when we get all the good things of the year is Shabe Qadr. It is the highlight of the month of Ramazan. Ramazan is the highlight of the whole year. Okay. Now, we have a riwayat from Imam Muhammad Bakir alayhi salam. Allahumma salam ala Muhammad. Fifth Imam says, as much as possible, in your wajib and mustahab prayers, recite Surah Al-Qadr. He says, this is our surah. He says this is the surah of Ahlul Bayt. He says this is the surah of Wilayat. He says that when you debate with someone who doesn't believe in our Wilayat, debate with them using Surah Al Qadr. Question Where is Wilayat in Surah Al Qadr? We know other verses are full of wilayat. Innama waliyukumullah al-yawmu ak- al-yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum balligma unzila ilayka min rabbik ayat al tathir and these kinds of things. They are all full of wilayat. Where is the wilayat of Surah Al-Qadr? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Tanazzalu al-malaikatu wal-ruhu fiha bi-idhni rabbihim min kulli amr salamun hiya hatta matla'il fajr. That is the ayat of wilayat of Surah Al-Qadr. Why? Think what Allah is saying here. Tanazzalu al-malaika. All the malaika descend. Jibra'il, imagine, imagine. Jibra'il descends. Mika'il descends. Ruh, which is even greater than all of the malaika, descends. All of these malaika, all of the malaika descend. Question, where are they going? Where are they descending to? What does it mean that they descend? Here, ulama give us a very beautiful point. They say, listen, when Allah sends down rain, rain is a physical thing. So where does it hit? It hits the physical earth, correct? Rain drops fall and they fall on the earth and the earth becomes wet. Okay. Malaika, farishta, angels, are they physical or non-physical? Non-physical, thank you. Non-physical. So it doesn't make sense that they come onto a physical thing. That doesn't make sense. They have to come to a thing that can actually accept them and it is of the same thing as them. 
So physical things doesn't make sense. You can't say, Malaika descend upon the ground, on the sea, on the trees. No. They are not physical. They don't need physical things to descend upon. They need something which is the same quality as them, metaphysical, non-physical. So now what is non-physical in this world? It is the soul of the human being, correct? The soul of the human being is the metaphysical thing in this world. Okay, soul of the human being, higher. Which soul? Are they going to come to my soul? Are they going to come to your soul? Are they going to come to any old sinner's soul out there? No, they wouldn't dare. They can't mix with that kind of soul. They will only come to a pure and purified soul. They will only come to the soul of the Imam of that time. Someone asked Imam Muhammad Bakir, they said, Mola, do you know when Laylatul Qadr is? Because we have three possibilities, yeah? Three possibilities. Do you know which one it is? Imam says, how can we not know when on Laylatul Qadr, the angels are encircling us? They're doing tawaf of us. How can we not know? Of course we know. Imam Zaman receives the angels which are sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why Imam Muhammad Bakir says that debate with those who reject our wilaya with Suratul Qadr. Ask them, is this true right now or not? Are the angels coming down every year or not? They will have to say yes because Quran is, can't, can't be out of date. They'll say yes it is. Then where do they go? Which insan e kamil do they descend upon? So second point, Aziz Ani Muhtaram, is in this month, don't wait for, for Laylatul Qadr to come. From now only, in your program of ibadat, incorporate the recitation of Suratul Qadr as much as possible. In your namazes, in your mustahab namazes, in your daily practice, take a tasbih, take a counter, whatever it may be, keep reciting Suratul Qadr as much as possible, but at the same time, Make the link between Quran and Imam Zaman. Make that link. That link is very important. That link is very important. Imam Zaman is the one to receive the angels. Imam Zaman is the one in whose wilayat and authority all of this is happening. This is why, Azizan, do you see on Laylatul Qadr? It is not just sufficient that we open the Quran and we say those few sentences. Allah says, no, on that night you put the Qur'an on your heads. Then what do we do, O oh Allah? Do we say, Bika Ya Allah? Yes, but that's not enough. You need to mention each and every one of the ma'asumin as well. Bika Ya Muhammad, Bika Ya Ali, Bika Ya Fatima. Again and again, each of the ma'asumin. Why? These two things cannot be separated. From the time Rasulullah told us in Ghadir, Inni tarikun fikum I'm leaving behind me two great things. Kitab Allah wa itrati. Lain yaftariqa. They will never separate. Whoever doesn't have wilayat doesn't have shab qadr Whoever doesn't have wilayat, there's no shab qadr for that person. Whoever doesn't have Ahlul Bayt, the Quran is not complete for them. They will not understand Quran properly. So second practical point was what? Recite as much as possible, surah Qadr, as much as possible in your namazes, outside of your namazes, and make the link to imam zaman Third practical point, and then we finish with a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. <laughs> Rasulullah gives a khutbah at the end of Sha'aban. He says in it many, many things, do this, do this, do this, do this, feed people, Take care of orphans, give sadaqah, recite blessings upon me, do your namaz, do your duas, do your Quran, etc., etc. After listing all of these things, Amirul Mu'mineen asks a question, and only Ali can ask this question. He says, Ya Rasulullah, what is the best deed to perform in this month? If I was to perform one deed, what is the best of deeds? He says, Ya Abu Hassan, Afdalul A'mal fi hadha shahar al wara'u an maharimillah. He says, Ya Abu Hassan, these are my words now. Ya Abu Hassan, don't do any of that. If you want to choose one thing to do, don't do any of that, what I've said. 
Just stay away from guna. Don't do namaz ishab. Don't pray Quran. Don't pray Surah Qadr all day and all night. Don't pray your duas. Don't do na- dua iftita. Don't do dua kumel. Don't do shab Qadr na'amal. Stay away from sins. Biggest, biggest obstacle in our life. We're going to come on to this in later nights. Biggest obstacle in our life is guna. Whether you look at afterlife problems or this life problems, biggest obstacle is guna. There was a man, his name was Bushre Hafi. He lived at the time of seventh Imam, Imam Musa Kazim alayhi salam. Allahumma sallallahu The maid of Bushre Hafi comes outside to throw something outside. When she's outside, Imam meets her. Imam hears that from Bushra's house, there's so much music and the sounds of music and partying going on. Imam asks her a question. This question is metaphorical, but she took it literally. Imam says to her, this man whose house this is, is he ghulam or is he hur? Is he a free man or is he a servant? Obviously, if you're a servant, you're not going to be partying in someone else's house. He knew that. She took it literally. She said, no, what are you saying? Of course, he's a free man. Imam then says to her, you are right. He is definitely free. Had he been a servant, he would not have done this. She didn't understand. She went back in the house. Busher says to her, what took you so long? She says, you know, I met a man. He said, which man? He, she said, he looked like this, this kind of face, this kind of clothes. He understood it's Imam Musa Kazim. He said, what did he say? She said, he asked me, is this person, meaning you, are you a free man or are you a servant? And I said, he's a free man. And Imam said, definitely he's a free man. A servant would not do this. Bushre Hafi started to panic and shake. He understood in that one moment. He got that tawfiq in that one moment to understand that actually I'm not behaving like a servant of the Almighty. I'm behaving as if I'm a free person, as if I have no Lord and no God. I'm as, as if I've created myself, as if there's not a Lord on top of me who's watching me at all moments. Bushr Hafi panicked. Bushr panicked. He was not Hafi at that moment. Bushr panicked. He ran outside his house without any shoes. That's how he gets the name Bushre Hafi. Hafi means the one without shoes, barefooted. He panicked. He ran after Imam. He said, Imam, Imam, what did you mean? Imam said, Bushr, if you are a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is not the way to be a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bushr says, okay, my mola, I want to change. How do I change? Imam says to him, Bushr, being a servant of Allah and disobeying Allah, they do not go together. Guna and being Abdullah, Abde Khuda, do not go together. He says, Busha, leave your sinning aside. Busha then poses such a complex problem. You know, you think sometimes we've got complex issues. Look at this issue. He said, but Mawla, I am employed by Harun. Harun, the accursed. I'm employed, but I work for him. Now what do I do? I'm actually working for him. All my roji is, is, is haram roji. What do I do now? Imam says, leave your position with Harun. I will take care of you. Imam Zamana won't take care of us. If we try our best, if we make some steps in our life, we try to change certain things, Imam Zamana won't take care of us. If Imam Musa Kazim took care of Bushar, Imam Zamana won't take care of us. He left. He left his employment. He joined Imam. He left all the Bani, all the Bani Abbas dealings that he had. And from then on, as a gesture, as a gesture, he said to himself, that day, meeting Imam Musa Kazim in the gullies of Medina had such an impact upon me. I was barefooted at the time. From now on, I will not wear shoes to give myself a reminder how I was on that day. Like, for example, when you go to Karbala for the first time, sometimes, you know, we go to some um, momentous, amazing thing. 
maybe we can like we say, okay, this ring I wore on the first time I went to Karbala, I will never remove this ring. I'll always keep this ring on. That's what he did. And then he became known as Bushre Hafi, the one who was affected and impacted so much by Imam Musa Kazim that he said, from now on, I will not wear shoes for the rest of my life. Three practical steps. What were they? Number one. Number one. Who's going to tell me? Sahar. Number two. Surah Qadr. And making the link to Imam Zaman. Number three. No sins. Staying away from sins as much as possible. As much as possible. Then Allah helps. We are not masoom. It's possible sometimes we have shortcomings. Allah will help, inshallah. We pray to Allah for tawfiq. We pray to Allah to forgive, forgive us. To give us blessings in this month. To allow us to worship Him as best as we can. To keep our community strong and stable. United, strong, always. Looking towards uh, the coming of the Holy Twelfth Imam. Oh Allah, hasten the repentance of Twelfth Imam. Give us a tawfiq to be in his group when he comes. Rabbana taqabal minna, innaka anta samiul alim. For the quick zuhur of Yusuf al-Zahra, let's have a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Oh.